almost 2,000 years, Christians have been lawyering the Bible to try and figure out how love thy neighbor can mean hate thy neighbor, and how turn the other cheek can mean screw you, I'm buying space lasers. <laughs> Martin Luther King gets to call himself a Christian because he actually practiced loving his enemies. And Gandhi was so fucking Christian, he was Hindu. <laughs> but if you rejoice in revenge, torture, and war, hey, that's why they call it the weekend, you cannot say you're a follower of the guy who explicitly said, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. The next line isn't, and if that doesn't work, send a titanium fang dog to rip his nuts off. <laughs> Jesus lays on that hippie stuff pretty thick. He has lines like, do not repay evil with evil and do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. Really? It's in that book you hold up when you scream at gay people. <laughs> and, and not to put too fine a point on it, but nonviolence was kind of Jesus' trademark. Kind of his big thing. To not follow that part of it is like joining Greenpeace and hating whales. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's interpreting, and then there's just ignoring. It's just ignoring if you're for torture, as are more evangelical Christians than any other religion. You're supposed to look at that figure of Christ on the cross and think, how could a man suffer like that and forgive? Not, Romans are pussy, he still has his eyes. <laughs> If you go to a baptism and hold the baby under until he starts talking, yeah. you're missing the message. <laughs> like, apparently, our president, who says he gets scripture on his Blackberry first thing every morning, but who said on 60 Minutes that anyone who would question that bin Laden deserved assassination should, quote, have their head examined. Hey, Fox News, you missed a big headline, Obama thinks Jesus is nuts. <laughs> To which I say hallelujah, because my favorite new government program is surprising violent religious zealots in the middle of the night and shooting them in the face. <laughs> Sorry, Head Start, you're number two now. <laughs> but you see, I can say that because I'm a non-Christian, just like most Christians. <laughs> and... Christians, I know, I'm sorry, I know you hate this and you want to square this circle, but you can't. I'm not even judging you, I'm just saying logically, if you ignore every single thing Jesus commanded you to do, you're not a Christian. You're just auditing. <laughs> you're not Christ's followers, you're just fans. And if you believe the earth was given to you to kick ass on while gloating, you're not really a Christian, you're a Texan. Rule the Pennsylvania teenager who <laughs> faces up to two years in jail for disrespecting this statue of Jesus. <laughs> Must show us he's really got balls and try it with a statue of Muhammad. <laughs> oh, don't fucking start with me because it's going to get worse right now. Actually, that's a trick question, because there are no statues of Muhammad, because if you made one, there'd be a fatwa, and you'd wind up dead. <laughs> now, folks, I know, as difficult as it is to face this issue, it is important for us as Americans to remember what we stand for. Of all the iconic American images in our history, there's no picture that makes my heart swell with patriotism quite like this one. Because this kid is not going to get killed for this. He's not even going to jail. Yes, there's some local dumbass DA trying to throw the book at him, but come on, he's a kid. He's just doing what kids do, making Jesus blow them. <laughs> USA, USA, USA! 
It may not be in good taste. I certainly don't condone this type of behavior. Praying, I mean. <laughs> but it speaks volumes about why liberal Western culture is not just different, it's better. <laughs> President Obama keeps insisting that ISIS is not Islamic. Well, maybe they don't practice the Muslim faith the same way he does. <laughs> but if vast numbers of Muslims across the world believe, and they do, that humans deserve to die for merely holding a different idea, or drawing a cartoon, or writing a book, or eloping with the wrong person, not only does the Muslim world have something in common with ISIS, it has too much in common with ISIS. There's so much talk, you can claw, applaud, sure. There's so much talk about wiping out ISIS. You can't, not with bombs. You can only expose that something is a bad idea, like extended warranties. <laughs> Cultures are different. It's okay to judge that rule of law isn't just different than theocracy, it's better. If you don't see that, you're either a religious fanatic or a masochist, but one thing you are certainly not is a liberal. <laughs> to count yourself as a liberal, you have to stand up for liberal principles, free speech, separation of church and state. <laughs> and <laughs> finally, new rule, until someone claims to see Christopher Hitchens' face <laughs> in a tree stump, Idiots must stop claiming that atheism is a religion. There's one little difference. Religion is defined as the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, and atheism is precisely not that. <laughs> Got it? Atheism is a religion like abstinence is a sex position. <laughs> now... <laughs> Believe it or not, I don't really enjoy talking about religion all the time. In fact, not only is atheism not a religion, it's not even my hobby. And that's the best thing about being an atheist. It requires so little of your time. <laughs> but there is a growing trend in this country that needs to be called out. And that is to label any evidence-based belief a religion. Many conservatives now say that belief in man-made climate change is a religion. And Darwinism is a religion. And of course, atheism, the total lack of religion, is somehow a religion too, according to the always reliable Encyclopedia Moronica. <laughs> now, it's a dodge, of course, straight out of the grand intellectual tradition of I know you are, but what am I? It's a way of saying, hey, we all believe in some sort of faith-based malarkey, so let's call it a push. No. No, 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 no. It's not fair that people who can't defend their own nonsense get to create a fake, fair and balanced argument the way they do when asserting that evolution and creationism are equally valid. I'm not saying that atheists are perfect thinkers. Everyone has blind spots. I'm sure there are atheists who think ponytails look good on a man. And... <laughs> Pineapple belongs on a pizza. Ayn Rand was an important thinker, but... <laughs> but when it comes to religion, we're not two sides of the same coin, and you don't get to put your unreason up on the same shelf with my reason. Your stuff has to go over there on the shelf with Zeus and Thor and the Kraken with the stuff that is not evidence-based, stuff that religious people never change their mind about, no matter what happens. That's not atheism. I'm open to anything for which there's evidence. Show me a God and I will believe in him. If Jesus Christ comes down from the sky during the halftime show of this Sunday's Super Bowl and turns all the nachos into loaves and fishes, and well, I'll think two things. First, how dare he interrupt Madonna? She is going to be pissed.
And two, oh, look at that, I was wrong, there he is. <laughs> My bad, praise the Lord. <laughs> but that's not going to happen. And short of that, if you still insist atheism is a religion, then it's only fair that we get to do all the loony stuff that you get to do. And I'm going to start tonight by unbaptizing Mitt Romney's dead father in law. <laughs> yes. In case you didn't hear, it was discovered last week that Edward Davies, Ann Romney's father, an enthusiastically anti-religious scientist who called organized faith hogwash, was posthumously baptized in the Mormon tradition 14 months after he died. They tried to do it sooner, but he wouldn't stop spinning in his grave. <laughs> so here then is history's first unbaptism ceremony right now. <laughs> for the late Edward Davies. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the presence of math, gravity, evolution, and electricity to honor Brother Edward and to send the powers of SEAL Team 666 to rescue him from planet Klolob. <laughs> so that he may spend eternity with the kind of free thinkers he chose to hang out with on Earth. So by the power granted to me by the Blair Witch, <laughs> Shlemiel, Shlemazel, e Pluribus Mumbo Jumbo, Expecto Patronum, Susu Sudio, Yo Mama, I call upon the Mormon spirits to leave your body the fuck alone. Let me just show you something he said this week. Show the tape where I was a good student. I think it starts with his reacting to the Muslim man. <laughs> to your point about whether he yeah. is mentally ill or not. I understand things. I comprehend very well, okay? Better than, I think, almost anybody. <laughs> okay, not only is that mentally ill, but it reminded me of this movie. <laughs> I can handle things. I'm smart. I'm like everybody <laughs> says. Like, no, I'm smart, and I want respect. Exactly. <laughs> you know, other presidents have lost in court before. Uh, here's how a former president, who uh, was so much more mature than the president we have now, who we so wish we had back, handled it when he lost in court. First of all, it's the Supreme Court decision. We'll abide by the court's decision. That doesn't mean I have to agree with it. <laughs> See, I thought you thought I was going to go for yeah. Obama. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were going to do Nixon. That's right. right. Okay. Right, right. But uh, isn't that something? We're at a place where we're missing George Bush. Yeah. <laughs> we're George Bush. I mean, or Barbara. It, it bothers me that you're trying to make the case that this is somehow normal. This is not normal. Yeah. We're not wrong to be saying that we were, are trying to cling to some sort of normalization. No, but okay, but let that me throw you back at George Bush then, because George, people say Trump's a monster, right? He's the new Hitler and so on. George W. Bush was the one that took this country and my country into an illegal, unethical, immoral war in Iraq, which killed a million people True. and thousands of troops. Let me finish my point. And killed a million people yeah. and thousands of troops, right? That is a monstrous act. It was taken as revenge against a country that had nothing to do with 9-11. That is the act... Trump's been they... there three weeks. Right. Give him time. So my point is... Yeah, but my you're point talking is... About, you're you talking about to, making you him... see where this no, is going when have, somebody says, have, yeah, but, but, I'm the smartest person ever in the history of the world? You have to say... My point is you have to save the outrage for genuinely outrageous things. But Otherwise, we all get fed okay. up with the outrage. We're, but we're right. comparing him to Hitler. But I'm sick of talking about Trump everywhere you go, that's all people talk about. But I'm sure that the, you know, the gypsies and the homosexuals are tired of talking about Hitler too. And you notice I didn't mention the Jews because he didn't either when he talked about the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's tempting to say he puts out so much crazy shit every week. We're just going to throw up our hands and ignore it. No, I'm not there yet. Put up the list. We made a list of the crazy. 
and the lies. <laughs> this is just from one week. Here's the crazy list. Okay, crazy. Number one, so-called judge. He called a judge a so-called judge. Keep going, let's hear the list. If something happens, blame him. Blame the court. That's insane. See you in court, he said to them. You think our country is so innocent. That's what he said to Bill O'Reilly. What's, cra what's crazy about that? Well, when <laughs> I said it, they fucking threw me off ABC. <laughs> What is crazy? Let, what is crazy about that? Let's. Okay, you're right. You think America's innocent? It's, Seriously? After the, uh, what I, no, I just no. said about the Iraq War? Do you think that's innocent? No, Sorry. but I just think that but it's, America has done bad things. It, Sorry, right. everybody. No. But how come? So is my America's country. Putin. That's not that. Putin is a brutal dictator. He just right. said America's not There's innocent. There's no camp comparison. Yes, but it was in response to a question when Bill O'Reilly said Putin's a killer, and he said, yeah. A lot of people exactly. are killers. You think we're so innocent? <laughs> I no. don't think America is innocent. Britain's and, not and you're innocent. Right. This is something Noam Chomsky says. Yeah. yeah. It just shows that the Republican... Is that good or bad? Sorry. Well, it just yeah. shows the Republican Party has no principles. No principles. It's just about who wins. Right. Well, as I mean, it's to, amazing. As opposed to the Democrats. What? what? As opposed to the Democrats who are currently behaving in exactly the histrionic way that they warned us Trump and his supporters would behave when they lost. This goes back, exactly to, the same this, way. This okay, goes back to what Bill was saying. This is not business as usual. We have, yes, we have someone who is disrespecting um, the people of this country. He's been called mentally putting, insane and an idiot tonight. But, 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 it's but, but, but it's it means it's time not, to but, riot. But it's not. Really. It's not <laughs> time to riot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's time it's, to blame down, down. We do need students. a resistance. It's we time need to take a chill pill and calm down. It's not. It is. You know what? You're so British. The <laughs> media has to stop all this ridiculous, over-the-top coverage of The Virgin Bachelor. No, not that one, this one. <laughs> now, I gotta tell you, I have just about had it with the press squealing in delight at every mundane thing the new pope does. Oh, look, he walked across the street. He picked the name Francis. He shook hands. Oh, fuck, he's a 76-year-old executive who got a promotion. They act like he's a baby who just made a boom boom. <laughs> In his first tweet, the new pope asked everybody to pray for him, and the media was blown away. Wow, prayer, I never saw that coming. <laughs> so out of the box, he is amazing. And did you hear he used to ride the bus? It's like we're all suddenly living in a papal tabloid. Popes, they're just like us. They like riding with the top down. They enjoy gossip. They put up with Joe Biden. Aww. Look, there are over a billion Catholics just on the back of my gardener's truck. So I get it that this is a legitimate news story, but can we at least stop saying that the job of Pope is so hard, such a burden, no one would even want it? What? Okay, first of all, you're selling an invisible product. It doesn't get any easier than that. No one's ever going to come back from the dead and say, oh, it's bullshit up there, there's no heaven. It's just an empty lot. Hard job, all a pope does is talk and everything you say is right by definition. And you're there for life, talk about tenure. And what other business could you be in where your company gets caught running a child sex ring since forever and you still keep your customers? And that is the advantage of being around for 2,000 years. You know, people think all the church's rules and traditions come right from Jesus, but almost none of them do. The Catholic Church has basically always done what we do here at Real Time. It's a bunch of guys sitting around making up new rules. <laughs> for example, new rule, confession. Jesus never said anything about confession, even thought of it. They pulled that out of their ass in the 12th century. <laughs> Just like they did with new rule. Women can't be priests. That's also not in the Bible. Neither is celibacy for priests. We didn't have that until the fourth century. And even then, priests could still get married. They just couldn't have sex, like regular marriage. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Jesus also never said anything about a pope, let alone that he should live in a palace and get carried around in a chair like Liz Taylor and Cleopatra. <laughs> or papal infallibility, another rectum-derived edict <laughs> that came in the year 1870. It's an eternal truth that's 11 years younger than the escalator. <laughs> I remember the new rule they made up when I was a little Catholic boy. Okay, first we had new rule, no meat on Fridays. And then one day, and I do mean one day, <laughs> the Pope went, uh, this just in, Hold on, I'm getting something. <laughs> New rule, meet okay on Fridays. I mean, the whole thing is just so shamelessly made up as they go along. 